Alright, it's May 29th and just like the past two days, we're going to continue on the theme of learning how to do new things. So today I'm going to talk about, well, let me start with the story. So I went snowboarding for the first time a long time ago and the first day out of everyone in my class, I fell the most and I sucked the most. I couldn't snowboard at all out of everyone. I was horrible at it. And just in general, I'm pretty bad at doing new things. The, I used, I guess I used to be bad at doing things that I didn't have any conceptual knowledge on. Like for food, I have enough experience learning new things and I understand how food works. So that's different, but as far as like motor skills in my legs for balancing. I didn't have very much of that. So I sucked at, uh, like I never skateboarded or did anything snowboarded, I mean, uh, surfed or anything like that. So I was really bad at uh, doing it for the first time. So uh, first time when I was in Utah, where I was in the, like how to, how to snowboard class and my very first time down the slope, the instructor forgot to tell me how to uh, brake <laughs> or slow down. So it's a pretty not steep hill, but there was maybe eight people in the class. We we're all sitting at the top of the hill. And then he, he was telling us how to turn and all that stuff. And then he told people to stand up and then like, you would slide down really slow, but I stood up and I was parallel to the mountain. So basically I was at the angle to go straight down the mountain and I didn't understand the concept of how to break yet. So anyways, I just go rolling down the hill at full speed. I just keep getting faster. And I almost fell off the mountain actually cause it was like a, it was like a slope. Like it was like this that was going down and I was really close to the edge. So. Luckily, <laughs> I uh, I crashed myself on purpose to not fall off. I kind of like did a jump and I tried to plop, <laughs> uh, plop on the snow and I did. But after that, I stood up and then I started rolling down the hill and there was these four snowboarders and skiers just standing at the bottom and I just started yelling at them because I didn't know how to turn. I just crashed right through all four of them. Nobody was hurt, but yeah. Very first time snowboarding, I was the worst out of the whole class. Just like uh, when I do other new things too. I don't do new things very often, but when I do, I suck at it. And I don't know if it's because of my way of learning or whatever, but I, I like, I need to understand everything from the very bottom of it. I need to understand, I need to make every mistake myself for my for me to learn. I can't have somebody tell me, you don't do it this way because of this. I need to do it. I need to experience the mistake and the pain and then I'll learn. So very first day I sucked the most and went back to the hotel. Next day had the same class. But the second day I was a lot better. Like I would say, if I had to rank myself out of eight, I went from eight to two in one day. And I think uh, the more mistakes you make, the more you learn. That's one part. And also it's magnified within your first day of doing something. I think it's just because your brain doesn't, uh, it, it learns the most on the first day of doing something brand new. So even though you might not be better at the end of the day as you were at the beginning of the day, when you go to sleep, your brain kind of processes all the new knowledge you gained. And I think you have uh, higher rates of return if you practice more on the first day. If, if I snowboarded for like 10 minutes and then I went to bed, and then the next day came, 
and I applied the same amount of time to it, I don't think you would learn as much as if you went really hard and made a ton of mistakes on the first day. So usually when I try to do something new, I try to cram a lot into it on the very first day and spend a, a lot of hours on it because that's when I think you'll get the best return on investment as far as spending time to learn something. And another thing I wanted to talk about is you, you always hear people say uh, you're never perfect or whatever, and it's always a learning, you're always learning to get better. And it is true, but uh, to say there is no perfect, there, there is a perfect, like let's say a Quenelle, a technically perfect one. If you, whatever size you want it to be, if it looked perfectly smooth and all the angles were perfect, and there, it, it's like, what is, what is a circle? That's a technically perfect circle, right? So certain things there is perfection. Other things like let's say a piece of sushi, there might not be perfect because uh, people's perceptions and flavors and tastes are always changing. But perfection is not linear. It's like uh, certain things have perfection and certain things don't. And like I said, let's say I was trying to make a Quenelle, right? If I went like this, that's not a Quenelle. That's 0% correct, right? Now, if I went like this, or a Rocher, if I went like this, it looks somewhat correct. If you had to put a numerical value on how good it was, that might be, let's say, out of 100 points, that might be like a 10, right? But if I, if I do something like this, it's a little bit better, right? It has a smooth edge, but it has a ga big gaping hole on this side, and it's kind of pointed over there. So it's better. That might be... So that's the thing is, if you apply a numerical value to everything, your very first day, you're gonna get exponentially better. You go from making blops into making things that might land in the 50, 60, 70 percentile. But that's the thing with uh, people saying, the more you practice, the better you get at it. It's like, uh, let's say this one. This one might be a 60. Or, oh yeah, you get the idea. The first day you make the most improvement because you suck the most. And when you practice, every time you get a little bit better, some days you might not even get better, but every day you get a little bit better at doing it until you're consistently, because that's the thing, consistency too. You, I might be able to make a really nice one, one time right is let's say 80 or 90 might be able to do it once but if i did it a hundred times how many of them would come out like that so it's a it's a matter of averages it's like uh practicing for competition i remember when that hot dish that i scored above everyone the person who was standing in front of me to go in for the competition, they I asked that person, how many times did you practice your dish? And she said, I practiced it 20 times. And, and then she asked me, how many times did I practice? And I told her three times and I won. Now, why is that? Because even though I didn't practice that dish 20, 30, 40, 50 times, I practice hundreds to thousands of times cooking things, searing things, baking things, rep repetition, plating, moving around the kitchen. I did those things a couple hundred times. So I only did my dish, I think I did it twice and I won. So in that sense, it wasn't so much of practicing my specific dish that made me win, it was me having a lot of kit, uh, experience in the kitchen 
doing everything that makes up the sum of the parts. So, oh, 10 minutes. All right, that's it.